Hi everyone, my name is Faustine Ramirez and I'm a master tutor with Med School Coach. Today we'll be reviewing a Step 2 CK medicine question. So let's start by reading the stem. A 22-year-old college graduate presents to the physician's office to complete health clearance paperwork before starting her first job as a school teacher. She spent the summer volunteering daily at a homeless shelter and is excited to be starting her job in the fall. She has no past medical history and takes no medications. She was born overseas and moved to the United States when she was two months of age. She currently feels well and has no symptoms. Tuberculin skin testing at 48 hours reveals an induration of 12 millimeters. All previous tuberculin skin tests have been negative. Her last skin test was six months ago before starting her volunteer position. An x-ray of the chest shows no abnormalities. Which of the following is the most appropriate next step in management? So I'd like you to pause the video for a moment and try to work through this question on your own first. All right, welcome back. So let's approach this question together. The first step is going to be to read the very last sentence of the stem. So to read the question of yourself, which of the following is the most appropriate next step in management? So this is a management question. So we'll have to identify what the scenario is in the STEM as we're reading and then answer a specific question about it. And as we glance at the answer choices, these all have to do with um, some form of either diagnosis or treatment um, relating to tuberculosis or um, the lack thereof. So um, this is going to frame how we read about this um, question stem. We need to approach the STEM, um, identifying the key elements that are going to help us identify whether this patient needs to re uh, repeat testing, whether she needs treatment, or whether um, nothing at all is indicated. So let's start from the top and highlight the key elements. A 22-year-old college graduate presents to the physician's office to complete health clearance paperwork before starting her first job as a school teacher. She spent the summer volunteering daily at a homeless shelter and is excited to be starting her job in the fall. She has no past medical history and takes no medications. She was born overseas and moved to the United States when she was two months of age. She currently feels well and has no symptoms. Tuberculin skin testing at 48 hours reveals an induration of 12 millimeters. All previous tuberculin skin tests have been negative. Her last skin test was six months ago before starting her volunteer position. An x-ray of the chest shows no abnormalities. So before we go on to the answer choices, um, let's take a moment and try to interpret this stem. So in terms of risk factors for tuberculosis, there are a few in the stem that we should pay attention to. Um, one is the fact that this patient was born overseas. Whenever you see that, it may be a clue that the patient received the BCG vaccine, um, which is routinely given in a lot of countries at birth. However, it's not explicitly stated, so we don't know for sure, but we should potentially consider whether or not she got the BCG vaccine uh, as we're thinking about this question, that would be an important thing to at least have in our mind as we're thinking about these answer choices. So that might be there as a red herring, but that also might be there because they're trying to get us to consider the fact that she may have gotten the BCG vaccine at birth. Another risk factor is that um, she is volunteering daily at a homeless shelter, which is um, increases her risk of having or contracting TB. In terms of her previous risk, we're told that she's had no previous skin tests. They've all been negative, so that's important. So her previous skin tests have all been negative. And then in terms of, ass of assessing her current situation and interpreting her findings, so she is asymptomatic. She has a um, new tuberculin skin test with an induration of 12 millimeters. And I say new because all her previous ones have been negative, and her last one was six months ago, and we have a negative chest x-ray. So in order to answer this question, we have to be able to interpret the tuberculin skin test. And so the question is really testing your ability to interpret the degree of induration and whether or not that's concerning, um, and then to interpret based on the absence of symptoms and the negative chest x-ray what we would want to do about it next. So let's take a moment to review these learning points and then we'll come back to answer this question and look at the other answer choices. So in terms of interpreting tuberculin skin test positivity, it's going to depend on what your risk factors are for tuberculosis. So we use the smallest um, amount of induration. Um, so in other words, the lowest thresholds 
for patients who have HIV, who are immunosuppressed with chemotherapy, transplant, um, or TNF-alpha inhibitors, or other form of immunosuppression, or those who have very close contact with individuals with active contagious disease. So in these categories, we're going to use a threshold of five millimeters or more as being considered positive um, for the tuberculin skin test. So the lowest threshold for the patients at highest risk. And that makes sense, that's intuitive. Then we use a threshold of 10 millimeters for individuals who either work or live in high risk settings. So healthcare workers, people who work or live in prisons, um, people who work in homeless shelters or homeless populations, patients who use IV drug use, um, those who recently immigrated from endemic areas, so five years or less, children who are less than four years old, or those with chronic medical conditions, including patients on dialysis, those with CKD or malignancy. So here we use a moderate or medium um, threshold of 10 millimeters or more as being considered positive. And finally, in a normal healthy person, four years or older, we're going to use a threshold of 15 millimeters. Now, in terms of diagnosis, um, a positive PPD or a positive tuberculin skin test means that we must get a chest x-ray to rule out active TB. Even if the patient is completely asymptomatic, this is commonly tested, this is a high yield point, even in the absence of any symptoms, a positive PPD warrants a chest x-ray to rule out active TB. Now, you can use a PPD or um, the quantiferon gold test, and the quantiferon gold is preferred in patients who receive the VCG vaccine, and that's because of the possibility of a false positive on the PPD in those patients who did receive the VCG vaccine. So in a question where it's explicitly stated that the patient received the BCG vaccine and you're given the option of the quantiferon golds, um, also called here interferon gamma release assay, IGRA, you should choose um, the interferon gamma release assay in a patient who has received the BCG because of that risk of false positivity. So this is the preferred answer in patients who receive the BCG vaccine, but if it's not an option, you would still use the PPD and that would not change management. You would still do the same thing. Um, even if the patient did receive BCG, if they had a positive PPD and a negative chest X-ray, you would still consider that um, latent TB and you would treat them for latent TB. So in other words, the diagnosis of latent TB infection is the presence is defined by the presence of a positive PPD or um, interferon gamma release assay or quantiferon gold. So if they have one of these two that's positive and a negative chest x-ray, they meet the criteria for latent TB and this warrants treatment. That's because they're at risk of reactivation. Um, and so we want to treat them to eradicate the infection. So the treatment regimens depend, um, you have a few different options. Classically, the teaching was isoniazid for nine months. Um, you could also use isoniazid and rifampin for three months. They won't make you choose between these. But if you see, if you don't see isoniazid times, times, times nine months, which is the classic teaching, if you do see this option, that's appropriate as well. You could also just use rifampin for four months. And remember, if you're using isoniazid, you must supplement with pyridoxine or B6. Now, this brings us to our next really high yield point that's commonly tested. Do you remember the side effects of isoniazid or the toxicities? So the important ones to remember are hepatotic toxicity. So you can just have mild elevations in your liver enzymes, or you can even have um, you know, very severe hepatotoxicity. Um, so there's a spectrum of disease here, but it's toxic to the liver. Um, and then you could also develop peripheral neuropathy um, because isoniazid impairs uh, B6 or pyridoxine metabolism. So that's why we supplement with pyridoxine. So going back to our question here, um, in terms of how we're going to interpret these findings and answer a specific question about this diagnosis. So the key things here, like we mentioned, were that she is working, um, she's been volunteering daily at a homeless shelter, she was born overseas and moved to the United States, so perhaps she received BCG, but we don't know for certain. Tuberculin skin testing reveals a duration of 12 millimeters. So how do we interpret this? So remembering that in patients who either live or work, in high-risk settings, such as prisons or homeless shelters, we're going to use that moderate threshold of 10, centi or, sorry, 10 millimeters or more. So this patient's induration was 12 millimeters, and given she 
has been working daily at a homeless shelter, she's considered at risk. So she falls into that moderate risk category. So we're going to use the threshold of 10 millimeters or more for positivity. So her TST or tuberculin skin test is considered positive. Now the next key finding here is that she has no symptoms and her chest x-ray is negative. So the combination of positive PPD or positive tuberculin skin test plus the absence of symptoms and negative chest x-ray puts her into the category of latent TB infection. And so this warrants treatment. And so the next best step should be identifying the correct treatment. And so based on what we've learned, there are a few different regimens, but one of the classic ones that we know is correct is isoniazid for nine months. So we look at the answer choices and we see that E is the correct answer. So repeating the tuberculin skin test um, would not be appropriate. Sometimes this is done for healthcare workers or workers in high-risk settings, sometimes need two um, skin tests before being cleared to work in, in certain settings. But in this case, um, she already has a positive test, so we need to treat her. Repeating in one year, again, some of these um, healthcare workers or other settings require routine annual screening, but in this case, um, she actually meets criteria for latent TB, so we need to treat her. Repeating the chest x-ray um, would not really change management. She's unlikely to have an abnormal chest x-ray if we were to repeat it. Um, so that one doesn't really make sense. Testing for immunodeficiency. Um, in this case, um, there's nothing here to suggest immu immunodeficiency. We have an explanation for her positive PPD as she's been working in a homeless shelter daily for several months and she's been at, um, exposed to potential TB um, and potentially active TB. And so this is likely how she um, has a, why she has a positive PPD. Um, finally, treating with rifampin, isoniazid, pyrazinamide, and ethambutol, ripe therapy. Ripe therapy is used for active TB, but not for latent TB. And finally, no testing or therapy is indicated. So this could have been, um, you, you might have picked this if you didn't pick up on the fact that she had a lower threshold. So the normal threshold for otherwise healthy individuals greater than four years old is greater than 15 millimeters. But in her case, we don't use a threshold because she is at increased risk. She's in that moderate risk category because of her work at the homeless shelter. So we use the 10 millimeter threshold. So that means that her PPD actually was positive. So G is incorrect. So um, latent TB and TB in general, very high yield on the exam. I would be familiar with um, the different risk categories and the interpretation of the PPD, as well as the important management of latent TB. Positive PPD, you must get a chest X-ray, even if asymptomatic, really high yield point. And if that chest X-ray is negative, you should be treating for latent TB. If it's positive, you should be, cons you should be treating for active TB. And if you have the option between PPD and quantiferon gold or interferon gamma release assay for someone who has a history of a BCG vaccine, pick the quantiferon gold, but either way, um, both are important. Um, if either is positive, in the absence of um, any abnormal chest x-ray findings, you must treat for latent TB. That'll be with isoniazid for nine months and a few other alternative regimens as we reviewed here. Remember your isoniazid side effects. That wraps up our question of the week, and thanks so much for listening.